But if you are here this morning, God is good. Despite all the rain, despite all the challenges some persons are having in getting onto the internet, we are happy that you are here this morning. So we welcome you to our prayer meeting, Montego Bay SDA Church prayer meeting virtually. Let us pray. Oh, great God of heaven, we give you thanks for life. We thank you for your many blessings, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for the rain, though it has affected some lives. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have done in protecting us and providing for us. We know some persons are having challenges this morning and getting on. But Father, those who are really earnestly trying, I know that some breakthrough will happen. As we go through the devotion this morning, oh God, we ask your presence to be, we invite the presence to be with us, helping us, guiding us, and inspiring us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Luke 18, verse 1, Jesus says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Prayer is the conduit of communication between us and God. He discloses himself to us through his word, and we reply to him through our prayers. Prayer has benefits. So let us continue to look at the benefits of prayer. In our first discourse, we established that prayer helps us to develop a relationship with God, the God whose nature is love. In 1 John 4, verse 7 and 8, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this episode, we will declare that through prayer, we get a revelation of God's will for our life. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, declares the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You see, friends, when we pour our heart open to God, he works to direct our steps. God does not work in a haphazard way, oh no. His plans for us are straight, plain, and clear. Let us seek him most earnestly in prayer. When we do, he will impress the mind and will give us a voice. As God's people, we should be taught to fully rely on him and not on human inventions and uncertain tasks as a means of learning God's will for us. Let us not forget that Satan and his agencies are always ready to step into any opening to be found that will lead souls away from the pure principles of the word of God. In the book Prayer, page 223, and also repeated in the book Steps to Christ, page 40, the servant of the Lord says, Consecrate yourself in the morning to God. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be, take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at your feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. Brethren, friends, this is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to him so that he can carry out that which is his providence for you. On a day-to-day -day basis, may it be that we give him our lives, our total beings, 
give them all into the hand of God. And thus our life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. In Jeremiah 33, verse 2 and 3, Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. He says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. My brethren, my friends, let us use the channel of communication today. Let us talk. It is now time for the spoken word. And God has provided a, a man, a young man from who hails from the parish of Westmoreland. He's a recent graduate of Northern Caribbean University. Pastor Javain Billings is an energetic preacher, an energetic person who is here to proclaim the three angels' message to a dying world. I invite you to all say a prayer for him because it's all good when we have a young man who is, has dedicated his life to spreading the word of God. But before Pastor Billings comes to us, we will have a song by Sister Nicole Cunningham. In the middle of the night, I'm praying for a show. Everything's gonna be alright. But I see another battle, and it's down in front. I'm afraid I won't be able, and I'll go down in the sea. But he said, do you remember where I brought you from? To take a look behind you and see how far you come. Every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't? Didn't I walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea? I spoke to the wind and it up and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue and didn't I hear your wedding call? I walked right beside you. Just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of them on just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I'll do it all again. Now she's talking to her father, and her heart stopped with once a whole. She said, my bills are come undue, Lord. This age is not that far. She is a voice so still and low that I've moved like that before. And I'll do this little thing, child, and I'll give you so much more. It's my work on the water. And I calm the raging sea. I go to the wind. And it ups and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? And didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you. Just so you wouldn't fall. And didn't I leave? Just to die for your sin. I searched until I found you, and I'll do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, 
and I will do it all again. And I'll do it all again. Amen, amen. Didn't I walk upon the waters? Didn't I calm the raging sea? That song is so beautiful. I love when this lady sings, don't you? Yes, yeah, she has a way of choosing some beautiful songs. Sometimes these songs could have just say amen and we go home. But you're here to hear even from the word of God once more. I want to say a pleasant morning to each and every one who would have seen it fit to get up out of their bed so early. We know our week of prayer is on the early side, but early in the morning, we say when we rise, we will speak to God and we will listen to his voice as he seeks to instruct us further. I want to say thanks to my elder Francis. I want to say thanks to Sister Nicole for her lovely song. And I want to say thanks to each and every member who are here. I want to say thanks to my dear Elder Elder Bowen. He is a good friend. I'll say it every time I'm here that he's a good friend of mine. And I'm so glad that he would have seen it fit to invite me once more to come and speak with you on God's behalf. Today, with our Bibles in hand, we turn back to our scripture passage, Luke chapter 17 verses 25 to 27 was so ably read by our dear sister so wonderfully read I, I hope one day i can sit at her feet and she will teach me how to read so wonderful but today we seek to get a message from god so bow your heads with me as we pray loving father we're so happy that you are god who hears answers for we're so happy that even when we whisper them, even when they're from our hearts and no words come from our lips, just like Hannah, dear father, you hear and you grant wishes what man can't see, what man can't understand. So we pray even now for a blessing. We pray even now for those who are hurting that they may find comfort. Bless us now, we do pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible in hand, we turn back to a scripture reading. Uh, it says that, but first must suffer, he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. The Bible will have us to understand that the everlasting gospel comes not only from the lips of the angel. The Bible will have us to understand that the end time message was from the beginning. We talked about it yesterday that God said he's going to put enmity in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. But we are going a little bit further in the Bible to see if we can find the message somewhere else. If we can find a part of the three angels message somewhere else in the bible with our bibles in hand we find ourselves in luke luke who was a good writer they said luke was one of the best writer because he was a physician he understand how to write i don't know because doctors in our time write ugly uh, we are unable to understand let's say that but writers in, and doctors in our time don't write the best way but they say when you check the bible luke's writing uh, was uh, perfect in a way that he is trying to capture the scenery that he would have heard of he wasn't there but he is writing exactly what he would have heard that has happened he is writing so that his readers can see and understand what the messenger was trying to put forth if you want to understand understand Luke chapter 17 one of the best place to go and to mix it with is Saint Matthew chapter 24 and I told you on Sabbath for those who were there that Saint Matthew chapter 24 is a part of the three angels message and just the same Luke chapter 17 is a part of it in telling us what the end time will look like he is trying to capture the scenery of what our time will look like just before Jesus will put in his final appearance but even more special than saying that this part is written by Luke, the sweetest part of it, that these words come from the lips of Jesus. This message, this same gospel, this beautiful word of life came from the master himself, came from God himself, came from the son of God himself to let us understand that in these times we are living in, in these times that we are seeing, when we are seeing the atrocities that are are happening around us it is time for our prayers to ascend to heaven to shake heaven's storehouse to tell god that i need
need you to keep me with your everlasting love. In these times, we got to tell Jesus all about our problem. In this time, we got to tell him what worries us. Tell him that we are uncertain of our soul's destination. Tell him that we are worried about our brethren and friends. Tell him that we are worried about our youth. Tell him that there are some sick among us that are afflicted. There are some sick among us that we need them to be restored so we can bring the everlasting gospel to the end of the world. He says when this gospel in St. Matthew chapter 24, in turn this gospel is reached to the ends of the world, then shall the end come. You've got to remind God that God, I know you don't need a reminder, but remind me also because sometimes even while I'm crying to you, I need a reminder that I must go ye therefore and I must do thy work just before you come. You see, a lot of us are waiting for God to come. We are crying for him to come, but we aren't doing anything for him to come. Let me say that again. God says when this gospel reach the four corners of the earth, then shall the end come, but we are at home, sitting down, waiting on the end to come, but not doing anything for the end to come. If you want Jesus to come, if you want your payday to come, if you want the day when you shall reap the reward of your good works, first you have to work. Ah, I know there's a message there, but here is what Jesus was saying. In verse chapter 25, he says, the first thing you got to realize is that Jesus was on earth, that Jesus suffered as you and I. He says the first thing that you must, he must suffer many things and be rejected at this generation. Even while we look back in time and we see Jesus being rejected by those he came to save, save. we see Jesus being a by those he came to save, we seen Jesus being scoffed at. By those he came to save, we see Jesus being laughed at by the same people that he is dying on a cross for. It is the same thing that is happening today. The same people who God is calling from out of a life of sin is the same people who are scoffing at him. The Bible says in Second Peter chapter three, verse three and four, that if this doesn't happen, that in the last days that scoffers shall be and they will say where is God because we have been hearing of him for our eyes were at our knees and now we are old and grow the forefathers have died and yet they were looking for him and he has not yet returned I hear the bible says that you must not think of yourself in a same position because when you think not then shall the son of man put in his appearance you see many people are trying to pin pin down the day for when god is coming Ah, many people want to know the exact minute. And so they want to wait until the last minute to get ready for God. But God is saying, you need to get ready now. Because even though this generation is being afflicted, even though this generation is being tested and tried, even though our generation, even though the church is being persecuted, I'm telling you that your persecution, your laughters aren't just your laughters. And your hurting is not just your hurting. God, Jesus sees, he knows and he is there with you. He understands your pain. He understands when somebody laughs at you. I hear of experience where people go out to tell people about the love of God only to be laughed at, only to be turned away. I've seen men in my district who are laughing, saying that there is no God and we are just stupid. Walking to church every Sabbath, going there to preach to a God who is dead. But I hear that my God is not dead, but he is alive. I don't only hear, I feel him. I hear him speaking to me every day. He tells me of the good that I need to do so that my soul is not no longer wrapped up in sin. He tells me that I need to do my best because only my best is good enough. But here is what the Bible draw our attention to. It seems as if Jesus wanted for us to understand exactly what our time will be like. It seems as if Jesus wanted to pinpoint not only to his disciples as to exactly what will happen in 2021 onward until the day he put in his appearance. He says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Noah, do you remember Noah? 
think back in the time Noah was there. He was preaching day in, day out to tell people, repent and turn yourself over to God before it is eternally too late. And there were people there helping him build the ark. I hear the ark story. I'm not that preacher, but I'm telling you there is an ark that is coming to save mankind from their sin. But even though there are some people helping to build that ark, some people will go to hell with heaven on their mind. I'll say that again. There are many people who are helping to build the ark of safety, who are helping to call people out of sin. But in the last hour, in the last minute, when they should be in the ark, they will find themselves outside the ark. Ah, there are some people who should be crying out aloud, but their voice have gone weary through time. Yes, now I have been preaching. Yes, you have been hearing your pastor saying that God is coming. Yes, you have been hearing Sister Nicole singing songs after songs that yes, Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. What she's saying, she's been, she's been telling you that there is a God that is watching and there's God that is taking record. But you're not seeing that God, your strength is going weary based on time. But I'm telling you, let not time get you too weary because in the last minute, when you think it is peace and safety there will be sudden destruction because my god is not a god who slumber nor sleep he says i'm allowing time not just for your sake but also for others to come to the ark of safety before it is too late but just the same while you're in the ark of safety and i don't mean a physical building i don't mean the montego bay church i, I don't mean i tell you if you can be in church and out of christ the only ark of safety that we have is jesus christ so you got to be in the ark in the days of noah they were married and given into marriage today i hear that people are getting married just for opportunity people are getting married not for love but for money people are getting married not because they would have admired but because they want to use and abuse but i tell you just the same it was in noah's days people were happy people were merry i hear that even amidst covid 19 even amidst all that is happening people still find the time to worship the devil people are still for i hear look at this my mind as i seek to bring this sermon together something came to my mind you see at the beginning sister forms you talk about pride you see when covid just came everybody was saying church rally together and pray unto god and we were ex people were expecting that god would answer their prayer in giving them a solution but here is what uh, what happened now we have vaccine man stop to pray about covid Ah, somebody missed it. Uh, before we had vaccine, every now and then I hear prime ministers, I hear different um, sectors being crying out to the church that the church need to intervene on their behalf, need to cry out to God. But I tell you, just as today, people are now comfortable with the idea that they are satisfied with life as it is. They are okay <coughs> with drinking, with marrying, with doing all they choose. Ah, but I tell you, when you think it is peace and safety, they're going to be a waking up call for this earth. They're going to be something that tells us that this is the end. But even so, we have to pray that our eyes are open to the signs of the time. When the angel are out there telling people, worship the creator mankind is telling people that no there is no such thing as god there are couples coming around but i hear even so as they eat they drink they married that they were given into marriage unto the day that noah entered into the ark i'm telling you that even though you are seeing happy times are what look like happy times outside stay in the ark stay in like father noah let them laugh at you let Scoff at you because the God who sees and understands will reward every man according to what his works, not his words. But you got to stay faithful, you got to stay true, you got to be at a point where you are not getting ready but ready for the Lord to come. The Bible says, Noah entered the ark, and then the flood came. When you enter into God, you can rest there, you can wait there because you know that there is a flood that is coming but can i tell you 
that this flood that is coming, both cannot save you from it. Can I tell you that men are building rockets to go to space, thinking when this earth is about to end that they can make a way of escape. But I tell them that God says he's going to not only burn this earth, but the heavens I'm talking, I'm not talking about the heavens of heavens. I'm talking about the starry heavens. I'm talking about the things that mankind would have put in the atmosphere. Yes, you may think that these are places where mankind can run from from God, but I tell you, there is no place, neither on this earth nor in the heavens, that mankind can run where God cannot find them. Mankind is seeking to find their own way of escape, but there is only one ark of safety. And I'm not talking about a building again. I see man building, building, telling people to walk in and to be saved, storing flour for the days that are ahead. But can I tell you, the Bible warns us in St. Matthew chapter 24 that in those days, that if you're on the home, stop, don't come down. Run for your life. If you're in your house, don't run for anybody, but run for your life. I'm telling you what hardship that is ahead of you. But you got to be prepared. You got to be watching. You got to be praying. You got to be noticing. You got to take note. You got to make sure that your life is wrapped up in the ark of safety. That when the time come, your faith would have found the resting place. I tell you that bad days are a time for you to know if your anchor holds in the sweet rock of ages. What does it mean, preacher? You see, smooth days, which we expect, don't really teach us how good our God is. It is those bad days when things get rough and tough that teaches us that God is the strength of the, all those who are weak. God is a arm bearer of those who have fallen. God is the one who keeps the soldier's hand firm at war. But sometimes, even though we can't see him, sometimes, even though we can't hear him, sometimes, even though we can't see him, we got to trust him because we have no other resting place than that which is in Jesus. Jesus. But as I come to a close, I know yesterday I went over time, so I'm not going to take too much time. Here is what the Bible says. If you think that was only the sign that you must watch, you see, every destruction in time happened when mankind gets too happy. You see, when mankind gets too happy in sin, God's act. Uh -huh, I wish I had some time to preach on that. You see, anytime you see a mankind getting too comfortable in sin, when what you hear on the radio is nothing but sin, when you hear the music of today, today, it is nothing but sin. When you see the movies of today, it is nothing but sin. When you hear the conversation of people, even Christian, it is only about sin. But watch any time that happened. Take note of history. That is what Jesus is saying just before the three angels message come to a close you must take note of history history has a way of repeating itself jesus then moved from the day of Noah and said if you're not seeing it in Noah's time let me bring your mind to somewhere else so your mind can be open he says in verse uh, uh, uh verse uh, verse 28 likewise also as it was in the day of Lot. They did eat, drank, and bought. They sold, they planted, they built. Ah, but some day, the same day that Lot went out of the Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. What does that mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. Just today, you see men building, you see men planting, you see men doing all manner of things, thinking that they can satisfy not only their bodies but their soul they are thinking that when they get these things that it is well but i ask a question if you think that it is only in this life you should have hope then are of men most miserable ah i ask you this are you satisfied with what you're getting but if you're not satisfied i have good news for you that day coming a day when you shall leave it i hear in lot of time that mankind something I must get to your attention. Anytime you see sexuality move above spirituality, then be careful. In the time of Noah, they were married and giving into marriage. In the time of Lot, man, did, man went back to men, woman to women. Anytime you see sexuality being pushed above 
spirituality. Be careful. What does it mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. It means when you see in 2021 where homosexuality is being put above Christianity and you're saying you don't see that, let me open your eyes. When you see church are telling people that it's okay to go against the natural order of what God would have set on earth. When you're seeing people are telling church, church people that they should not preach against sin because God loves everybody. I tell you on Sabbath that God loves sinners, but he doesn't love sin. God came to seek and save you from sin, not seek and save you with your sin. Yes, you will have sin, but God says if you confess them, he is faithful and just to forgive. But I learned that mankind don't want God to forgive their sin. They want God to love them with their sin, but that cannot work because sinners cannot stand before a perfect and a righteous God. Mankind today are telling us that we must represent our love alphabet. Ah, what I'm talking about, some else, some Jesus. Ah, yes, we love them. And that's why we are telling them that they must run for their life, that they must come out of sin before it's too late. That is why we are praying for them that their eyes may be open towards the signs of the time, that we are telling them that the moment is nearing when God shall return and is going to punish them for their wrongs but no sexuality is pushed above christianity in that they are telling the church that you must put away the commandments of god and worship god as to how we would have dictated but time for man to go back to tell people that nobody can dictate how we worship or god only or god can tell us how to worship him ah it is time for man to go back to tell the world that it is not enough just to have a form of godliness but it's time for them to be wrapped up and tied up because time is wrapping up what does that mean i know it is my wrapped up time but i'm telling them forget not do not forget rather forget about the things of the world but do not forget that yes god is taking record yes do remember that god has punished in time past and he's going to punish in the future do not forget the things that happened to the antediluvian world do not forget the things that happened to saddam do not forget because lest i forget i will be punished but god is saying i have called your attention to do these things just before i put my appearance in i'm coming to a close I know I've said that before, but it's time for Monty Gobert to continue to pray, to keep on their knees, that in these last days, that they themselves will not slip to the things of the world, but they will keep their head up. Today, we are here. We're happy that God will not leave us. I love Jesus. Jesus is a teacher who tells us things that we need to remember when we are going to get this. But I'm so happy that today, that today his messages are happening. I tell you on Sabbath, do not worry about the mark of the beast. Do not worry about the things that are happening today. Fret for the souls that are going down in sin. That's what you need to worry about. Ask yourself the question, am I doing enough to save somebody from the sin debt that they are about to face? If you're doing that, then you need not worry. You need not fret. Because these signs, these times are only telling us that our redemption or payday is just at hand. It's only telling us that a time is wrapping up and God is about to put in his appearance. I know my time is up, so I'll just pray. Loving Father, we're so happy that payday is at hand. And while I didn't remember to tell your people about the topic of today, it reminds us that our payday is at hand. That while we see the atrocities, while we see all that is happening with the calamities, you said in your words, because iniquity has abound, the love of many has grown wax cold. Today we are seeing that people are no longer in love with people, nor in love with you. You said in your commandments that a new commandment, which give us a new idea of what you want us to do as Christian, you give us a new idea that we must love each other and we must also love you. Father, teach us how to love you because we're seeing that today the love of many is going dim, dear Father, and sometimes even as Christian, we feel it to our bones. But help us to remember that payday is just at hand. Help us to remember that our good works will not go in vain. So we must work for the master before the day comes when we can't do anything. Forgive us for many sins we ask. Amen.